Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. 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 Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala min la nabi rabat. Wa shadu an la ilaha illallah wahtahu la sharika la. Wa shadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I've been asked to say a few words to you, which inshallah will be some benefit to you. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our deeds in the month of Ramadan, as we are in the last 10 nights. They said the Ramadan comes every year, but we don't come every year. We're here now, we don't know about next year. But I was asked to speak to you about how I became a Muslim. And many of you I know, some of you I don't. My name is Dawood. And generally speaking, when I meet people, the first question they ask me is, where are you from? Now, that might be important, you know, what neighborhood I grew up in, what block I was on, or where I was raised. But I think it's more important that I tell you how I came to Islam. And maybe that will be a benefit to the people that we would say have been Muslim their whole life, or for someone who might be here who's a new Muslim. And how is it possible? How is it possible that I was like one of these people you see every day running around in New York City, doing everything that everyone that's not a Muslim might do? And I thought it was totally normal. I was having a good time. It seemed right. And everybody around me was saying, hey, you're doing the right thing, man. You're fine. You're fine. I wasn't a religious individual. I didn't read scriptures or anything like that. But how is it possible that now I'm sitting here in front of you? And it's only by the mercy of Allah. To take you back a little bit, I, I was probably a person that you could say was looking but didn't know I was looking. I was doing all the things that everybody else did, but in the back of my mind and in my heart, I wasn't satisfied and I was, I was trying to find out what is, what is the meaning of life? You know, what is all, everything, what is all this about? I, I, it's still something that just didn't add up for me. So while I was in school and even after college days, I started to read about different religions. So I started reading about Buddhism, and I, I learned about that, and there was a lot of good things that I learned. But yet, there was still something that wasn't there. It wasn't, something was missing. You know? Something wasn't quite adding up. So I went on, and I started learning more about Judaism, Rastafarianism. Of course, I grew up as a Christian, but I would say nominally, I knew, I knew a little bit about Christianity. But the Trinity didn't make any sense to me, the idea that there was three gods, or God was one in three, didn't make sense to me. So I kept looking, kept looking. And amazingly enough, and this is where I would say, how could this happen? There were certain people that probably looked like you, looked like anyone here who I work with, people I knew. They came to me and asked me, what do you believe? And they started to give me some information which I didn't know at that point was Dawa, but they were giving me a little bit of information about Islam. I said, read this, brother. So I began to reflect and think, you know, what do I really believe in? You know, what is, what is, the, what is the purpose of life? And I would go back and read, and, you know, but I was still living the life that I was living. And uh, one brother that I knew very well, he... Uh, he was recommended that I talk to him because he, you know, he has some knowledge of Islam. And he did something that maybe none of us might do. He said, why don't you come to the masjid and pray Juma with me? I was like, I, I'm not a Muslim yet. I mean, I'm reading about it, but I'm not, I don't, is that allowed? I mean, is it allowed to bring a brother to the masjid who's not a Muslim? Can you bring him and have him pray with you? Is that allowed? Is it hard? Is it something, is it, is it, is it something wrong? Is anything wrong with that? Brother said, you know what he said to me? He didn't, read, he didn't give me a whole lot of books. He didn't give me a lot of information. He said, uh, he said, brother, 
Come early, listen to the event, you get blessings for that. When I go down to make my, my, my ablution, just do what I do. Just do what I do. He didn't overcorrect me or, you know, tell me a whole lot of things, change myself, and change my name, anything. Just come and follow me. Just do what I do. So, took me to the masjid a few times, the Juma, and I was sitting there in the masjid, and, and then when everybody went down to make sujood. I said, man, this is really praying. This is really, I mean, I'm physically going down and putting my face on the ground. That's not common. To, to us as Muslims, it's normal, but if you never did it, it's pretty, it's pretty you know, different. And then I said to myself, at that moment, Allah, you know, put it in my heart that this is the real worship. Because all the questions that I had about those other religions, there was always a little hole, a little something, you know? And Allah kept showing me the right way, giving me the information that I needed, the knowledge, bringing the right people to me. And those people took action by Allah's, you know, permission. They took action and invited me here, gave me this to read, gave me that to read. And I called that same brother back who I, I, I spoke to him last week. I called him back and I said, brother, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take shahada. And at that particular time, he worked near the masjid and I worked near the masjid. So he said, well, meet me over there for Asr prayer. And, you know, I took the shahada and I looked out and I, I was still was like, wow, I'm really doing this. But I was 100% certain that it was right. And alhamdulillah, it's the best thing that ever happened for me. Alhamdulillah. So the thing that I, a couple of things that I would just say uh, for, for the brothers here and sisters. One, if you, wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, okay, you're going to interact with people that were just like me, okay, more or less like I was, regular individual walking around, doing whatever, working, whatever you interact with people. And you know, the, 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 the title of today after, the, after Fajr is called Morning Light. And I would just encourage you to share a little bit of that light with whoever you can, because you never know the person that you talk to might be like me sitting here one day and virtually by Allah's permission, and again, Allah is the one who guides us but that person will you know, be a Muslim and that will change his family, his whole lineage for the rest of the time, inshallah. So imagine now, you just, maybe you just told them a little bit about Islam or maybe your personality, your character, your, you know, your, your, your kindness. Uh, maybe it was your generosity uh, of your neighbors. And, and that's, an, that's a golden opportunity that's amongst all of us. And I'm, I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the people that I had around me, they did that. They took the challenge and did that. And I was, in one case, I was someone's boss. I was actually his boss on the job. How many people give their boss dawah? You know, my friend, Abdul Wahid, I still talk to him. I talked to him last, in the beginning of Ramadan. He's the one, he said, yeah. He, I said, to him, aren't you going to go to the president's club, man? We're having a president's club. We're going to Hawaii. You know, it's going to be great. We're going to be on the beach and everything. He said, brother, I'm, I'm going to Hajj. <laughs> so I was like, wow, this guy's giving up Hawaii? So that, in fact, you know, affected me. And then for the people who we call the reverts or the converts, the people like myself who seems like yesterday became Muslim, I would just say that the main thing that I would encourage you to do is to learn as much as you can about Islam every single day of your life and embrace the knowledge. I was fortunate to come uh, here and learn from uh, FCAD Institute even before it began. And then when we started, you know, FCAD and then now uh, New York City Muslim Center. And I can say that now we're in another generation where the students are now teaching. And I would say that if you're a new Muslim or if you've been a Muslim your whole life, take full advantage of, of whatever is available to you to learn more about your, you know, your religion. And uh, you know, that, I think, will help you, help your families, and you know, 
give you that type of uh, continuous certainty that this is the right way. So those are just a few words, you know, that I, that I wanted to share with you. I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. Um, yes, brother. Thank you, brother, for sharing. Oh. How many years are you now? <clears throat> It's, it's, I took Shahada in 1998, so it's about 21 years. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you might laugh and say well, 21 years, but I'm still, that's still, I was still not Muslim for many more years than I was a Muslim. So I still feel like I'm learning, and, then I, and I, I, still, I still do this every day. I pinch myself because actually none of my friends around me or anyone that I knew I didn't learn anything about Islam growing up, really. And, and, and it's only because you know, Allah chose me to be a Muslim. But yeah, 21 years. How do you make da'wah to your family? Well, my family, I, the question is how do I give da'wah to my family? I, I try my best to, first and foremost, I try to, uh, well initially I was probably very, you know, gun ho you know, I was like, okay, this is it. And, sometimes, and in the beginning, I'll be honest, some of the family members were like, hey, man, come on, we're not, you know, this is too much. I'm not ready. You know, that's your religion, you know. And I think they thought maybe I would, you know, get over it in a couple of days, in a couple of years. But as time has gone on, uh, I've, I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to share about Islam and, and uh, most importantly through my, you know, try to improve my behavior and my character and be better to my family. Uh, unfortunately, or up until this point, no one like my sisters or anyone has taken Shahada. And my mother, who and, and my mother who just passed away, we tried our best to give her the dawah, but uh, it didn't happen by Allah's qadr. But um, you know, Allah knows we tried our best to, to give her the dawah. But uh, yeah, we you know I think I think that that's always the, the most important thing and. And we try our best to, to continue with the, the rest of the family members. <coughs> yes, brother. So um, my question is, uh, what was like your biggest challenge uh, initially after converting to Islam? Mm -hmm. I think my my biggest challenge for me was I, I was I was a very social individual. You know, I, I went to a, you know I did a lot of uh, social activities, parties. I was involved in all of the you know, normal holidays that everybody does within the family. And my family is very close, my sisters, uh, my friends, all the associates. And it was a little bit hard to figure out how to be in the family and work with the, you know, be close to your family, not cut off the ties, but yet not participate in, you know, certain holidays or activities. Cause the day I took Shahada, you know, there were already things on my calendar, right? Somebody's birthday party, somebody's this or that, it was already there. So I had to, you know, it wasn't an automatic thing, you know? It's not like a light switch goes off and you stop doing everything. It, it takes a little bit of time. And it was a little bit rough, you know, from that standpoint. And some of my friends left me, you know, they said, you know, they, they said, oh, you know, why are you doing that? Every, only prisoners go to become Muslim, you know? I was like, what? You know, so I had a lot of, you know, I lost some friends, you know, but look at what I gained, you know, alhamdulillah. Any tips regarding the same issue? Tips and getting Tips. Like, you try and do something right, but your family and friends are kind of avoiding you. Tips how to overcome those. You know, Sheikh Lou asked, you know, what tips are there that, you know, how do you avoid some of the issues that, you, that I was facing or how do you deal with some of those issues? I think the first, the first thing I think is that uh, you have to realize, and it's not easy to realize in the beginning, that, it, you know, you made the change by Allah's permission. They didn't make a change. They're still thinking the way they were and you shouldn't look down on anybody and you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel that you are responsible for making anyone change, but try your best to be, you know, a, try your best to be a good person, a good friend, and, and be the generous individual in the group. Be the one who's most generous. That's what the Prophet Muhammad said, he was the most generous. And the people around him 
they had no choice, many of them, even if they hated the things that he was doing as far as the, the Tawheed and the Dawah, they were like, that guy? And that's what we want to be. We want to be the one that the people say, that guy? He is, no, that guy, that guy? No, that guy? Mm -mm. That guy is the one that, yeah, I can talk to him, I can approach him. So remain approachable. Don't cut off your, yourself from the people. Even though you, know, you might have to listen to a lot of things you don't want to hear, you might have things, just be patient. In time, they'll begin to accept you, and now my family's like, okay, you know, we, we want to do something together, but I you know it's Ramadan, and you know, what's happening? And you know, they're very respectful, you know? So that's some advice. Yes, brother. What advice do you have for, um, for uh, Muslim Americans who are handling uh, two identities that everyone should be aware of are socially uh, persecuted or socially not as accepted. So what is your advice for um, you know, Muslims as well as minority Muslims and how to handle that and how to, be, uh, how to face like, the racism that is within the uh, Muslim communities as well as outside of the Muslim community? Well, one thing that I have as an advantage, uh, you know, is a lot of experience growing up as, a, as an African American in America here. It is impossible that you don't experience racism in your life. It's something that is built into your daily existence. Uh, wherever you walk, whenever I would go into a room, you know, I can't hide, who, you know, my, my physical characteristics that indicate my heritage and my lineage. I cannot hide that. I can change my voice over the phone. <laughs> Good morning, so how are you? I can, I can fake you out that way. But if I meet you, you're gonna know that I'm just a black guy, right? So I'm familiar with that. And I, and I think that that's something that we have, we have paved, you know, we as African Americans have paved the way in that regard because we've been here for 400 years dealing with that. And I would say that to answer your question, how do you deal with the racism, learn about the history of America and, and how things got to where they are. Because we live in a time now where people just deal with the sound bites you know, of what happened yesterday. When you understand the history, then you can begin to appreciate and then you'll see that all of the immigrant groups, whether they were Muslim or not, all faced different things. It's no different for us. But this is our time and Allah is making it more knowledgeable for people, more information is coming out on Islam so you then have to be stronger. You have the tools, giving you some, some recommendations. Take advantage of those tools. Uh, learn about the history and know that, you know, not everybody hates you, you know. You know, there's maybe some people in the, in the government or something, but there's a difference between, you know, let's say the average individual who's just like you or me and then, let's say, a, a person in authority. So that's, that's something that, you know, if you take it from that perspective and meet people who are they, where they are, you'll, 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 you'll build relationships that way. Inshallah. Yes, brother. What is the best thing to What's the best part of Islam that you tell your life? Is it up to your expectation? What did you expect and what did you get? What was the best thing? <laughs> How can you say something's the best when everything's the best? You know, you know I, alhamdulillah. I mean, I, I always say that when you to, my, to me, like you know how you get on the. You ever been to the airport, and uh, and they say yes. What's your name, sir? Um, um, Muhammad Ahmed. Okay. By the way, we're upgrading you to first class. <laughs> you like oh, first class? Yes, sir. Take the first row behind the pilot. <laughs> to me, that's what Islam is. You're always in first class. Allah is always blessing the Muslim. So whether you're going to the masjid, coming to something like this, going to Hajj, you know, praying to Hajju, praying to Tarawi. So there's no best thing I can say, because I wouldn't want to say that, but it's, it's, it's all good as, as we know. And um, it's like, I feel like that's how it is. Wherever I'm at, it's always, I'm always in the best position being Muslim. Um, so, well, the reverts require a lot of help from the Muslim community, and 
many of us understand that many of us do not and many of us do not understand how to support and you have experienced that first hand mm -hmm. so i mean what is your uh, suggestion or what is your uh, experience about that that you can share with us sure yeah i have i have a very dear friend who actually was sitting in the or in the in the, the, the uh, masjid the day I took Shahada, I didn't know him at that time. And the minute I, I came out of the masjid, you know, uh, and he, he greeted me, but I didn't really pay attention. And, and he said, you know, where do you live? And I said, I live, I live that, at that point, I lived in Bayside. Wow, you live, I live in Bayside too? He said, I live in Bayside too. You know, where, you know, where do you work? You know, and just started asking me questions and he started recommending, you know, read this book, read, you know. At that time, it was like a lot of tapes and stuff available in, in front of the masjid. <laughs> Remember the tapes, you know? There was one brother, he's, I still know him, he used to have tapes in front of the masjid, Masjid al-Rahman, in Manhattan. So that brother just befriended me. And uh, he just, you know, like, became my, he latched on to me. And he, you know, he, you know, he would be like, hey brother, you know, Ramadan's coming. I said, like, oh, okay, what do I do? You know, he, he was right there. And he was right there. And it's not like he had to spend his whole life with me, but he did make himself available to me. And uh, to this day, you know, we're, we're friends and we went to Hajj together. And he lives in California, but when I go to California, I always stay at least one day with his family. So, I mean, I think that you just have to be, you know, be someone's friend, you know. Uh, be, be someone that, you know, they can talk to. And that's, again, it's up to the person, because I mean, you can try, but maybe they don't, they don't want to. But try your best to just support them and then give them what you think is needed, uh, that, that they might need at that time and just make sure that you're giving them the most authentic information and inshallah, you know, it, 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 it'll work out. And then they'll find other resources as well. Anything, anyone, any other questions? Uh, could you please share the very, very first feeling and describe the situation when you, uh, right before you took shahada, the masjid, the people, and what's... Uh, you were married before, right? During that time? I was married, yeah. And then how did you convey... How did you <laughs> let your wife or your children know about <coughs> And what happened, if you don't mind to share? <laughs> you don't have to share everything, of course. Um. Well, I think the, the initial reaction or the day that I came to the masjid that day and I, and I looked out into the audience, I was probably like, into the brothers there, I was probably like overwhelmed. You see the brothers when they take shahada, they're like, oh, subhanAllah, I mean, it's like, you can't believe it. You know, everybody, all of a sudden, all these people are hugging you, you don't know them. But I was, I just felt, you know, this is the right thing, you know? I mean, I, it wasn't like, I'm not sure. I mean, it was like, Allah just put that certainty in my heart. And I, and I felt like a burden had been lifted off of me because, you know, I had, like I said, I was doing like anything like everybody else, but I, I felt like there was something missing. And when I, 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 I felt like, you know, this is the thing that I can fully just get into and it will involve my mind and everything. And I'll, I'll just be content, finally, finally be content. As far as my family, I, I was telling them that I was thinking about it, you know, that I, I was thinking about accepting Islam. At that time, I was married to a woman. Her father was a minister in the church. And they tried very much, you know, in a good way uh, to, uh, to get me to join the church. Now, I used to go to the church, but every time that they would say, okay, anybody want to come up and join? I would sit back down. I never did it, you know. I never felt right, and, I, and then as I began to learn about Islam, I realized I could never do that. So my wife at the time, she felt like, you know, you, you know it's good, you know, it's okay, my husband's a Muslim now. But as time went on, it, it became a problem because she, you know, she's very much into the holidays and all the different things, and, you know, she wants to do things according to that, and I was getting away from that, so it started to create a problem. You know, alhamdulillah, we have a good relationship. We have a daughter together, and you know, it, it, you know, and I always, you know, anything that I could do for her, you know, and she's has the ultimate respect for me and, and everything. You know, she, 
my mother passed away and she, 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 she made chicken and she, she said, it's halal. <laughs> you know, so something went inside, you know? So alhamdulillah for that. But um, unfortunately, that didn't work out, but Allah blessed me with a new family, a new wife, alhamdulillah. And, um, you know, they all, actually they just met the two wives, you know? And all the other women were like, they thought there was gonna be a fight, you know? But now they meet, they hug each other, you know, it's, it's, it's so beautiful, you know? But I believe it's because of Islam. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Jazakallah khair, brothers. Thank you for listening to my words. And I, and I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will accept all of your deeds in Ramadan and bless us to uh, complete uh, the, the full days and, and, and make this uh, a day uh, that Allah will you know, remember that we tried our best to, to be good Muslims. Ashadu an la ilaha subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha and astafu luku wa tubi ilayhi. Assalamu alaykum. Yeah. <laughs>